Every year in America, there are at least 27 honor killings. There are thousands of honor violence cases and dozens of girls undergoing FGM, female genital mutilation. I wish I could show you the faces, but here are some names that I want you to think of the next time someone says we should accept and respect all cultures and religions. Tahani Mansour. Tahani was in her 20s. She was a pharmacist in Ohio, a beautiful young lady who committed the great crime of having a messy room and dating a non-Muslim. Her father went up to her when she was sleeping in her bed and shot her in the head twice. His family, meaning his wife and her siblings, stood by him the whole time and said it was because, wait, he has diabetes. True story, y'all, this is the news. I'm not making this up, I swear. Nurin Maliki, 20 years old. She was ran over and killed by her Iraqi Muslim father for being too westernized. So was actually her boyfriend's mom. She was ran over as well. When Nurin Maliki, you could find the 911 call online, just put in Nurin Maliki 911 call. Her mother called in to find out where she was at. And she told the 911 responder, Tell her thank you for doing this to our family. She deserves this. Aya Tamimi, 19 years old. Her father and mother beat, restrained, and burned her for reportedly declining an arranged marriage to an older man and talking to a boy. Asiya Hassan was beheaded by her husband for requesting a divorce. Her husband worked at a Muslim TV station that promoted a peaceful and moderate Islam. Can you define irony? Sandila Kinwal was strangled by her father for failing to be true to her religion. Amina and Sara Sayyid, 17 and 18 years old, were shot by their father, who was an Egyptian immigrant, for dating non-Muslim boys and for being too westernized. 16-year-old Palestina Isa was murdered by her mother and her father for getting a job and dating an American boy who just happened to be black. Ma'arib al-Hishmawi, 16 years old, refused an arranged marriage, so her father and mother beat her and poured hot cooking oil on her. The list goes on and on. No, I am the exception. I want you to take a moment and imagine the sheer terror that these girls and women felt. They are trapped in their homes. They're trapped in their communities that we, we have allowed to practice Sharia here in the United States. And customs from a culture of death, apartheid and abuse. And they are not in Jordan, they're not in Iraq, they're not in Iran or Afghanistan. They're right here. They're American girls, they're American women that we as a nation have decided to offer up as a sacrifice on the altar of acceptance and tolerance. No more will I sit on the sidelines while America takes a turn from being a refuge for the oppressed to a land of oppression. Join me and the other brave voices here today and say that Sharia is not welcome here. It is, I do not accept it for me. I do not accept it for my daughter. I do not accept it for your daughters. I do not accept it for little Muslim girls. I do not accept it for Muslim women. I will not accept it for my neighbors. Sharia is incompatible with the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and humanity in general. Now, Michigan. I'm going to single you out here for a minute. Michigan is at a great risk of undergoing an elected takeover of Sharia. Linda Sarsour, who is outraged that Sharia is illegal in 22 states, has endorsed Abdul Il Sayyid for governor. This man and his wife are not only Sharia compliant, they have strong and public ties to care, Hamas, and the Muslim Brotherhood. And there is no room in America for anyone who wants to live under Sharia. A person cannot be a slave to Sharia and a free citizen pledging their allegiance to America. 